AG Joel Gao and uh, VT9 NAS Meridian. Got my wings here uh, in July of 07 and then uh, elected to stay for a year as a SIR grad. Finished the IET in September of 07 and then this incident occurred uh, October 30th of 07. Uh, it was a FAM flight, FAM 12 student, uh, was Lieutenant JG Rick Prescott. And uh, FAM 12 is his fifth flight in the front seat. So still a uh, very new uh, student. And um, let's see, we briefed that day. Everything was, uh, was normal. It was a pretty quick brief because uh, there weren't really any new introduced items. And uh, so we briefed, walked on time. The weather, uh, it was a beautiful day. Uh, I think there's a, a few at uh, 4,000, 3,000, something like that. Um, but for the most part, uh, clear skies. And uh, did not check the bash specifically, but um, uh, we were aware of the bash condition uh, based off what Aidis was saying. Uh, so we uh, walked on time, did the pre-flight, jumped in the jet, got it started, uh, no issues there, and, uh, and then taxied onto the runway. And this is where the uh, HUD tape uh, picks up. So uh, we'll go ahead and roll it. Kill the lights. see the uh, the bird strike from the back seat you saw it came right down the front uh, off the nose and into the left intake uh, so I didn't see it we hit the bird uh, I just obviously a really loud bang and then uh, uh, significant loss of thrust is what I noticed and then uh, we immediately got the EGT RPM warning light uh, I looked at the EGT gauge it was uh, completely spiked at a uh, thousand degrees Celsius uh, the light comes on at 650 degrees Celsius so uh, we were definitely um, uh, having some serious problems. Uh, so I took the controls right away and started us in a, a left-hand turn with the intent of landing back on the runway that uh, we took off from, uh, landing opposite flow. Uh, so let's go ahead and play a little bit more. This happened. Citation 5, zero, zero. Air. Approach, clear the emergency, return back to land. Flight one two five. Chad, one two five, say again. Chad, one two five, Roger. When able, contact tire channel one two. Chad, one two five, station one two. Tell you emergency O two. What? Tell you emergency O two. Okay. All right. So, like I said, I took the controls and made the uh, declared emergency with departure. Uh, it started to turn back uh, once they figured out what we were saying, they switched us over to tower. Uh, and then at that point, uh, also one of the other uh, negative indications we had was a significant um, loss of uh, OBOG's uh, oxygen flow through the mask. So I was about to just pop my mask off uh, and keep flying. Uh, and then my student, uh, Rick Prescott, told me to uh, pull the uh, emergency O2, uh, which I did, and that restored the uh, good oxygen flow. That's what he just said there. So, and that helped out a lot because now we were still able to communicate um, with our masks on. Uh, let's see, so we can go ahead and keep playing. Citation 5, sir. Roger. Clear visual approach. Just right. side. Tom, we're coming back to land. Key tire. 1-1-4-8. Hi, one coming back to land. We're going to land on 1-9-1. Power, we're going to land on 1-9-1. One, 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 one. What's your five? Now we're we'll, we'll up to prove. No, we're going to land on 1-9-1. We're going to land on 1-9-1. 1-9-1. 1-9-1. Point your five. We are in zero-five. 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 Zero-
Tower heard that and uh, just assumed that we had made the, the wrong call and they told us to enter a downwind for uh, runway one left. Uh, and that's when I told him, hey, no, tell him again, we're gonna land on one nine left. And then uh, he, he called again and emphasized that. Also at this time, um, I uh, was mainly just looking out, looking at the runway. Um, the RPM was decaying the whole time. Uh, when we hit the bird, it was probably about 104%, uh, which is uh, when we're at MRT. And then by this point, it's already uh, decayed um, probably through uh, our idle RPM, which is at about 55%. By the time we made it over the runway, the RPM was all the way down to about 35%. Um, and then uh, down to about 20% or less by the time we, uh, uh, we touched down and, uh, and shut down. Um, so, let's go ahead and play a little more. No, no. Hold on, hold on. Let me get it. No, no. Roger. I'm riding you. Okay, put it down. Okay, so a tower clears to land on one nine left, and uh, I had to wrap up the turn there to uh, get on the center line. Uh, at that point, uh, Rick told me to uh, reminded me about the gear. I thought he was telling me he was going to drop it. I told him to hold it. Uh, like I said, I wasn't really scanning the RPM anymore, but I could just feel that we were losing thrust the whole time. So I wanted to wait until we were like over the runway before we dropped the gear. So that in case the engine did seize up, we would be over the runway and be able to touch down. Um, so once we were over the runway, I told him to go ahead and drop the gear, and uh, and then we just floated uh, until the uh, until the gear came down. I told him to let me know um, when we had three down and locked. So. Okay, drop the hook. Stick down. Okay, um, so it takes about 10 seconds for the gear to come down. Uh, so we were just floating down the runway, waiting for that to come down. Uh, and by the time it did, we were probably at about, uh, I would guess, between three and four board. Um, whenever we touched down. So he told me we had three down locked. I looked and verified that we had uh, good indications. I'd also put the flaps down to full already by this point. And uh, we touched down. Uh, and then as soon as we had three down locked and we touched down, I realized that you know there was not much runway left. I told him to go out and drop the hook and uh, just hope that we could catch the long field gear. So I did that. And uh, as soon as we touched down, I got on, just, just stood up on the brakes. And um, we started to decelerate. Uh, really rapidly. Uh, so I think even if we had missed the, the gear, uh, we may have been able to stay on the runway. Um, and even if we had, had tripled off, it, it would have just, you know, it wouldn't have been out of control. The, uh, right. Everything that happened. Uh, talk about uh, some things like CRM. Uh, like I said, the student was, uh, was really new. Uh, and uh, I was also uh, a new instructor. I've only been instructing for, for a month and uh, obviously only had experience as a, as a student going through the uh, um, pipeline. But um, I felt like uh, uh, Rick Prescott did help me out quite a bit. I think pulling the uh, emergency action was, uh, was a good call. Had we not done that, we'd have had a lot more difficult. Uh, some other things other that, uh, that we could have been more verbal about was, uh, like I said, I was looking out the whole time. Uh, and uh, he could have been telling me a little more about what, what our uh, uh, indications looked like, you know, that the RPM was decaying uh, and things like that. Um, but there's, there's so many... Uh, you know, caution, warning cautions going off that is, it was almost impossible to, to take it all in. Uh, but I did look, we didn't, to my knowledge, we never had a firelight uh, and I never saw one. Uh, and had we had that, that would have been my uh, immediate uh, indication that we we're going to eject. But since we never saw that, uh, I felt like we were fine to go ahead and stay with the jet and, uh, and make an effort to make it to the runway um, until something uh, told us that we needed to get out. Um, big picture so, thing to take away from it um, is uh, not every emergency procedure is uh, not everything that happens is covered in the in the PCL and uh, and this situation is one of those things um, we were experiencing an engine failure but the engine had not failed uh, so we had obviously we had enough thrust to make it back to the runway uh, so. Be aware of your situation, uh, of your surroundings, uh, and uh, and where you are, and um, and then stay with the jet for uh, 
until you, you have something that, that indicates that, that it is time to get out. Uh, we wouldn't have been wrong had we ejected uh, in our situation, but uh, obviously um, we were able to make it back.